Hey, everyone. We're here for another uh, great episode of Life Optimized. I'm Dr. Neil Pov, and we have a really, really good episode with somebody I've met here in the New York City, oh my God, like three or four years ago at this point. Um, he is a master of many talents, and we're going to go through all of them. I'm sure if you don't laugh at least five times during this podcast, he's not done his job, so <laughs> we're counting on him. Um, and But he's definitely used uh, health optimization, life optimization tools throughout all of his different facets of his life. And uh, we're going to introduce here Jimmy Martin, uh, who is just a great listen, has so much great information to provide us. And uh, thanks for hopping on, Jimmy. Dr. Paul, good to, good to virtually see you. Um, and I feel so much pressure. You said it's going to be a great episode and that I'll make them laugh. Uh, so uh, I couldn't feel more uh, fearful and excited with, with that sentiment. So thank you for sharing that. There you go. So <laughs> yeah. Before we get started, let's uh, yeah. I don't think we have any worries about the uh, the fun part here. I could, like I said, I think we could just let you go for an hour, and it would be a great episode. But uh, thanks. Yeah, Jimmy, we're gonna go through Jimmy's whole path in a minute here, but let's give him his full introduction here. So Jimmy is, Jimmy Martin is a New York City based entrepreneur and creative current creative currently serving as the co-founder and head of fitness at Burn with three R's, the health and wellness company behind the Today Show touted Burn Board. He has over a decade of experience working as a health and wellness professional, both as a group exercise instructor and personal trainer to C-suite executives and various celebrities in television, film, and fashion. Previously, Jimmy has worked as an advertising copywriter, greeting card writer, I didn't know that, playwright, and executive producer under his production company, Mayamo Jimmy Productions. Jimmy is a 2007 alumnus of George Mason University, where he was a member of the Division I wrestling program and graduated with a B.A., in interpersonal organizational communication and minor in business management. Jimmy holds his national personal training certification from the American Council of Exercise. So thanks for coming on. So Jimmy, let's talk about kind of, we know, I know where it's ended. And again, you've definitely added some optimization tool throughout your whole career. Uh, again, you went from comedy writing and wrestling to now, uh, having an on, uh, omni-channel fitness brand. So let's say how things started and how, and then we'll work our way through uh, all the, from coal to fitness to the burn board to your own personal life hacks. So let's get started. So where do we start? Yeah. From? Oh, well, I think that like the, the, the overall theme here, Dr. Paulvin, is that like, I've always wanted to do challenging things and use challenges as opportunities to grow. So like the first, the first really challenging thing for me was trying to convince my classmates in high school to watch me and my other, you know, four other, um, you know, Caucasian uh, friends uh, dance to NSYNC songs uh, in, in talent show with our name called Diversity. We were like five white guys that were like an NSYNC cover band and, and uh, NSYNC cover boy band in high school. And uh, looking back, it made sense why we were diverse, but I realized we completely misinterpreted the word diversity in that in that model. So that was challenging, but we worked through that. But wrestling really was like the first exposure to like doing incredible uh, something that was incredibly hard and trying to make your way on you know on the other side of it uh, forever changed. And so that was a great vehicle to get me to to school because I had gotten a scholarship to to uh, be a student athlete at George Mason University. And I don't know, I've, just, I've always gravitated towards tough things. I mean, comedy's tough. Com you know, I came to New York in 2009 to be a comedy writer and performer. And I, you know, in the writer's room, uh, whether it's in advertising or in a for a comedy show, is just as competitive as any other room, whether it's on the, you know, the, the floor of Wall Street or, you know, in, in a group exercise studio amongst, you know, 30 plus other people, uh, leading, you know, following the lead of a, of a charismatic instructor who's, tasked to do so many different things in a short amount of time. But I think like what's, what's in, and then again, cold to me is an incredible catalyst for, for, po you know, for positive change, something to work through. I say it's like a year's worth of therapy in like three to five minutes. So, you know, the common theme for me is that like, I've always wanted to show up to, to challenging times, challenging experiences and having that make me feel, you know, uh, ha have that encourage me to have a sense of normalcy in my life. Because if I wasn't doing anything challenging, I think I would just sort of, uh, you know, spontaneously combust and it would be the end of Jimmy T. Martin. That would be bad. No spontaneous combusting here. So, no, no. <laughs> so <laughs> I, mean, I mean, wrestling, I mean, we're probably overlap with everything. Wrestling is probably of all my athletes that are my patients are athletes wrestling 
or combat sports like that. I mean, you are, I mean, you're trying to get down to weight. You're trying to build up muscle, not get, make sure you're at that <laughs> weight where the weird right. suit or whatever cool uh, new trick there is to get. I know. Weird. I'm wearing I'm wearing a sweatsuit right now because I'm just I just finished finished a workout on our on our you know the burn board here but yeah it's it those, those that sport in general like well if people don't know like the you know what that entails you know not only do you have to compete at a high level you have to make weight before you're even given permission to perform your sport so for me in high school I wrestled at 215 pounds. I was around like, you know, 225, 230 in the off season. But when I got to college where I was paid to be an athlete in the off season, I was like 225 pounds, 230. And I was, my competitive weight was 184 pounds. So, and I had teammates that would fluctuate 20 some pounds during the week of a match and have to lose weight. And so it's like, how, how does the body perform at its, you know, at the, at its highest level when you're like purposely dehydrating yourself to make weight? I mean, now they've created higher, you know, higher standards of, of performance within, you know, not just the, the collegiate wrestling scene, but mixed martial arts through the UFC or Bellator uh, to make sure that these, that these athletes aren't dying, trying to do their, the sport that they love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Things were a little, I mean, things, some of the things I've heard would, I don't know how they do it, but I think it, again, it's that commitment. And that's kind of one of the qualities that you've kind of said has gotten, gotten you through and motivated you to be success in, again, comedy writing and fitness are about as diametrically opposed fields and you've done both. So like you said, in, in all those different facets, you've had to command respect, show that you're are good at what you do have other people actually listen to you and respect you without scaring the bejesus at them that you have to find that happy medium so what tricks is it always kind of using your your great humor are there certain things that you always use to kind of be able to achieve both sides of that of that coin there where you're get the respect but also uh, have people listen to and want to know what you have to say yeah that's a great question i mean the things that really draw me towards conversations with people or businesses that are looking to have my business is some relatability factor. I mean, I, I, humor is a great way to, to draw people in, to get them to, to show that human, you know, the human side of things. Uh, and I think that with, with businesses trying to, to outreach to prospective customers or businesses that are trying to uh, be able to make, you know, to retain the, their customer base Showing that human factor is super important. I mean, you could smell, you know, you could tell from a mile away when someone's all about all about the business and not about the the actual experience. And I was very proud when we had our our fitness studio in New York City from 2018 to 2020. You know, I always said that if when you walked through our doors, it felt like you knew us before you knew us. I mean, we had that familiar feeling in that first impression. And that was a combination of, of hiring great people that were built in the likeness of my of my co-founder, Johnny Adamick and myself, and also finding people with real stories, not this like artificial, you know, filtered, you know, uh, archetype of what a fitness professional or what the people that support a fitness brand should be. But really hiring, hiring people that you would play cards against humanities, you know, at 1 a.m. in a, a very, very small Brooklyn apartment that you're paying, you know, way too much money but, for, you know, those types of people. So I think I think finding a way to 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 let your guard down and, and show who you really are and, and to be, you know, unapologetic with with how you see the world is, is the way that you let people into your world. That makes sense. Now. We're going to get into Burn. I mean, again, I'll, I'll say it's now. When I walked into Burn, yeah, you definitely had that family feel that you knew everybody's name and you kind of befriended them. It wasn't that, okay, we're tough and we're aloof and we're not, we're just going to make you hurt and be in pain for uh, at 45 minutes or so. But so in terms of the laughing part, laughter is health. Everybody feels better when they laugh. I mean, you want to have that relationship. So since you're a comedy writer, can you make anybody can anybody be funny? Can anybody learn to laugh? Or is, are there people who are just, they, they, they just, they don't get it. Oh, I, ab absolutely. It is. A, it's a language that anybody can speak. And I always joke and say that a, a, a sympathy laugh is still a laugh. So even if you deliver something that you think is funny and you just hold 
you know, after you delivered your punchline for a little bit longer, people will laugh out of out of sympathy for you. So regardless, you can make people chuckle. And I think that the best type of humor, you know, stands alongside people in in their journey to understand themselves and the world around them. So, you know, with Burn, we would joke and say, we're cool because the thermostat says so, you know, like kind of deflecting that cool factor to the actual thing that we had innovated in the industry, which was, you know, being the world's first and only cool temperature fitness experience. So, you know, having people quite literally warm up to the idea of working out in a bespoke beer fridge that was set at 50 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 minutes uh, was, was a challenge, but by doing it in a very, um, you know, a very meaningful way, a way that like sparked curiosity. I think that that was, that led to a lot of our success when we had the studio pre pandemic and, you know, um, it was also, you know, a, a great branding opportunity for us to signal who we were to the world. And, you know, through the studio, we were able to have a, uh, another, you know, another incredible business be born out of the first innov innov uh, innovation that we did with, with cold. Now, is there, is there a trick to telling a good joke? Is it, is it in the delivery? Is it trying to find that who your audience is? Is there some one thing that really can help somebody there? Yeah, I think, you know, if you're looking at like a typical monologue joke, like what you see on Fallon or Kimmel or any any of the, the late night, you know, the late night shows, they deliver and they deliver like a fact that like kind of like sets the tone, like a, like a premise, right? Like talking about something that's going on in the world. And what they'll try to do is they'll try to lead you down a path, you know, in, in the middle of that joke to think that like, so to, to, to see where you, you know, they want you to be able to see where it's going. And then at the very last minute, like they, 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 you know, pull the rug from out underneath you, you know? So it's the idea of like misdirection, which is, which is really fun. Um, you know, I just, I had a friend the other day to talk about, you know, and again, I have a lot of uh, comedy buddies through, you know, working in advertising, also working, um, having worked on SNL and, and adjacent to, to that show, you know, someone was just talking about, wouldn't it be funny if there was like a, you know, a Brooklyn version of Twitter called Twitter? like T-W-I-T-T-A. And it's just like, it was so stupid. And I was just like, oh, but that's kind of silly, you know? And so I'm thinking like, okay, what does Twitter like have, you know, what would, what would be on Twitter? Would it be like, would, would all the, would all the, you know, all the conversation be a caps lock because it's Twitter. It's like, you know, this very aggressive form of Twitter, which one would argue, well, no, that's just Twitter. Um, so you're not reinventing the wheel, but yeah, I think I think that you can find patterns in in jokes. I think that the jokes that really make me laugh are the ones that either come from completely left field. Like we, um, you know, I had I was a part of a of a sketch comedy troupe called A Bit Much, which was really you know which was silly because all we wanted to do is like when people announced our names on stage, they would say, "All right, guys, and uh, now up is a bit much," and we would go, "Hey guys, we're a bit much. Uh, thanks for coming." And it was just like just for that joke, but we had done a sketch. I had done a sketch. Um, that involved no words whatsoever. It was called Untangled. It was just me sitting on stage for two and a half minutes, untangling my my headphones before these earpods came came about. And it was just people watching me struggle through untangling headphones, which is definitely a pain point that a lot of people can relate to. And at the very end, when I finally untangled them, I get up and then I pull my phone out and I drop my phone and my phone breaks. And that was just like the button. Cause it was like, after all that work, the, the, there was no payoff. Like I just, I, I smashed my phone. It's not going to work. So like stuff like that, where you don't see certain things coming, but like you are inviting people to be on the ride with you, or I think, I think is the best vehicle to, to land the best jokes. There you go. So you definitely, you have, a, you have from performance art to the, to the beer freeze. We were going to get the, to now. The fridge, so, yes. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, you went from Saturday Night Live and comedy writing to being the first cold gym in the country. And like you said, it was uh, felt like you looked like you just had a big beer freezer hanging out with your friends in 50 degrees and you're trying to convince people. And this is before, I mean, you were, you and Johnny were the trendsetters before cold was cool. No pun, well, I guess pun intended. That, that's, that's really good. That's really good. There. You talk, cold see, I'm cold. learning. You, you got it. You're teaching me there. So <laughs> yeah, but seriously, before you, I mean, nobody was, I mean, I remember the, I, we, I did my first cold immersion at your space, had to be 18 or 19. Yeah, and with Avi. I remember yeah. it was in January and we were in the, near the front window. The point being is now if you were doing it, people were like, okay, whatever. But literally we must have had a crowd of 10 or 15 people trying to figure out why in the world these people were like in their bathing suits, sitting in a, a, tank, of, a tank of ice. And what in the bleep are they doing? 
And yeah. we're like, it's for health. And like, we don't, whatever. And now, I mean, it's mainstream. You have celebrities doing it. Kim Kardashian's doing it. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I got it. So how, so what got you there? Why that? Why then? Um, let's, let's go down that uh, rabbit hole there. Yeah. So we were really, I mean, look, my background was competing in a very hot sauna like room. So I couldn't have, you know, innovated this, this experience with Johnny in a way that felt almost like I was completely contradicting what my background was. But I realized that, you know, through conversations that I had in 2013 with clients, you know, and specifically one who was a Harvard professor who talked about like how the cold just put a superhero cape on her back when it came to exercise and how like when she would do cold showers in the morning, she just felt like reinvigorated. Like she had a cup of coffee without having a cup of coffee. And that like really piqued my interest. And I just like, in, like in comedy, you just like follow the unusual thing and try to heighten it to a, to its button, like to, to the end point. And so I thought, well, if cold is a catalyst for, you know, for, for bettering athletic performance in, in some regards for, for burning more calories specifically because of brown fat being the, you know, the, the catalyst to help, you know, keep the body, uh, to help promote the body to, to, to stay warm at, you know, the byproduct of, you know, a brown adipose tissue is, is heat. So it helps to keep the body warm. I was like, why aren't we like turn the thermostat down when it comes to exercise? If, if cold has all these great benefits and after like a long extensive Google search, I couldn't find any type of a, of a, you know, of a fitness concept or, or program that really supported that. So I was like, all right, you know, my advertising brain came, came to the whole idea of burn, you know, with three R's because for most people burning calories was like the, is like the main motivation for, for exercise. It should be to, to have the body heal the mind, which is, is what my approach is now with, with exercise. But we wanted to like be be on trend and to to, to be able to to do, deliver something that that spoke to people. So it started with the name and was built outward. And you know Johnny, you know Johnny was um, a part of that conversation a couple of years after. I mean, really to kind of turn the conversation tone to to something a little bit more meaningful uh, in terms of like something with my personal life. I mean, I was. Uh, what really was the catalyst for me to start burn was I had lost my wife to cancer when I was 29 in, in May, uh, May 12th of, of 2014. Her name was Lynn Marie. I met her in college. She was a, a division one rower when I was a division one wrestler. She was my best friend. And she had told me about a week before she passed away that this idea of burn about like creating a completely different workout environment that was built around my, you know, an amalgamation of all the things I was passionate about, which was, you know, creating inimitable experiences that people that would live with people forever, utilizing my background with like, you know, with personal training and, and being a, a fitness professional and also a competitive athlete. And, you know, being a team player and, and building this with somebody else was like the proudest thing that you would never get to see. And like her, that, that sentiment had echoed within me far after she had passed away. And I was very fortunate to be Johnny in the private, you know, the, the private training space and, and tell him about this, like this thing that I didn't think I could create myself. And with Johnny's background as a former public health official under former mayor Bloomberg and, and we're having worked on his obesity task force, I felt Johnny was the, the other half to the conversation. So, you know, we had done, you know, we had done plunges with Wim Hof when he came to Brooklyn in 2015. And, even he was like not like you know under the radar for most people unless you were like really into this thing you didn't know who he was so we had done it and we were like man like besides like the 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 plunge being like you know the most the most i don't want to say intense but like the yeah the, the most intense version of cold exposure we were like how do we take that feeling and apply it to exercise. So the only other environment that we were able to explore was like a beer fridge. And I had friends at Six Point Brewery and I was like, hey, like I have a liability waiver. Can we do like a fun like trial in your beer fridge? And he was like, yeah, man, like he signed the waiver. He's like, good luck. And so we, you know, my, you know, my, my wife now, um, uh, Rachel, who was a, you know, a, a good friend of mine who worked in, in film and TV, helped, helped film it and cut it. And, you know, we made this like little teaser showing like that we were doing this thing. I never and heard this like, story. I didn't know it literally yeah. started in, in a beer fridge. Okay. And for, yeah, exactly. So, so 
you know, people thought we were crazy. Just, just like you, if you ask people 10, you know, eight years ago about, about getting into a cold plunge, they'd be like, shut up. Like you're, you're nuts. So like taking that feeling of using cold as a catalyst for growth, I saw cold, the way that we approach cold is very much the way that we approach conversations about death. Like it's very uncomfortable, but having lived through that experience of losing my wife at a young age, I realized making it conversational, being a, not being afraid to, to have a conversation or to show up to that conversation had, had parallels with how I was trying to imbue a new conversation about, about cool temperature exposure and the incredible things that, that happen when you make it a part of your life uh, instead of like resisting it and fearing it. So, so those parallels really drove the conversation to start a business with Johnny and to go out and pitch this thing over 300 times where people thought we were nuts and then to eventually raise over a million dollars to open up a studio in the most competitive neighborhood at that time, pre-pandemic for fitness, which is the Flatiron Chelsea neighborhood. So you had kind of found us when we were trying to heighten that experience by having actual ice bath and, and Wim Hof oriented seminars in our studio, which were led by, you know, Avi Greenberg, who was a dear friend and an incredible stage when it comes to cold exposure and breath work. And seeing you kind of go into that tub and almost feel like you were in your own casket for like the first few seconds. And then to feel like you were like, you have ascended into this like enlightened state was incredible. And I'm so happy and so fortunate that you got to walk through our doors and have all those crazy people that were like knocking on the windows, like what's going on? They're like, as if you were like the naked cowboy in Times Square, they're like, what's going on here? But now, like you said, it's so, it's so mainstream that if you're not doing it, people think you're crazy. Exactly. Yeah. And, and again, what's even great even now is looking back on it is it's, it, it's really become just the plunges to what people are doing. But again, like you said, there's other benefits to cold, by doing a cold workout because of the, how it adapts to brown fat, it works on some of the neurotransmitters. You're getting the endorphins and the, all the benefits of exercising. And oh, great! Now you're also doing it in a cold room, so it's like a, a double, triple benefit to it. So we, yeah, hundred percent. We wanted like a winter themed workout that was made for all seasons, and we always always said like it feels like a crisp fall morning, not a dark wintry night in 50 degrees. Now, if you tell it to someone that lives in California, they'd be like 50 degrees feels like, like 32 below zero. So, so depending upon like, obviously what your comfort zone is and what you're exposed to more often, uh, you know, will, will determine how, how that experience is, but more than anything, you know, Dr. Paul, we wanted to create an environment that encouraged movement. And it was amazing to see people walk out drenched in sweat, feeling like they were doing something to a greater degree that they were able to delay like fatigue fatigue during their workup because their body wasn't working so hard to dump heat. Like the, again, it was putting a superhero cape on their back and allowing them to enjoy their experience from, from minute zero to minute, minute 50. A couple of points. And then you all, again, you were also a trend set in the fact that you had what we call contrast therapy, where you had the, the ice training, the ice bath plunges, and then you had a sauna, which is, I still will say is probably the most awesome, biggest sauna. I, I miss Thank it you. completely. I think it had what fourteen people. I don't know how many people we could fit. Oh in. yeah, it it how was. How many clowns could fit in a clown car? But uh, it, I mean, honestly, it was like the cool. It was like the hottest, literally the hottest hangout in New York City. We it was the first communal uh, infrared sauna. We you could fit up to. I mean, depending on how how uh, you know the, the size of everyone, because you know if you fit a bunch of people like me, it would only be like ten people. But we've had up to like we had up to about twelve people that can fit in the sauna at one time, and it was a you know an infrared sauna experience. So it was also educating people on the benefits of infrared sauna and how like you know with traditional saunas it heats the water molecules in the air, and so it's like you're getting heated from the outside in. But with infrared saunas, it's a deeper sweat you're getting heated from the inside out. So like people were like you know we educate again. It was more about like edutaining people, Doctor Paul, and we wanted people to be able to earn their heat. And so giving them the ability to, to utilize the sauna as a, as a means to enjoy the full spectrum of hormesis, you know, this positive stress on the body, we felt was like beneficial. And we were very happy to be like first movers to do that. And it's so great to see how, you know, places like, you know, like, like uh, Portal with Pam Gold, who is a dear friend and someone that I go to now when I want to do contrast therapy, I go, I use her infrared sauna and I go into her cold plunge, which is, at, which is 39 degrees and it feels incredible. 
Um, I'm happy to see that we were able to be a platform, not only for education, but also for inspiration for a lot of other brands to be able to replicate this, not just in New York City, but but across the country. Yeah, no, I'm going to have Pam on a future podcast. She's like a, She's a treasure of the that health and biohacking community. So for people, listen, yes. So cold is great. Sauna is great. Sauna now, they have just come out recently saying that it, it's good. If you go into the sauna after you work out, it optimizes the benefits of working out. So it doesn't have to be in a cold place. But what you're doing with the hormesis, as uh, John mentioned, is in terms, Jimmy, sorry, Jimmy mentioned is that um, it increases stress on your body and the, and your body needs that stress. It pushes the body. It's going to push, push your nervous system. It's going to allow your body to adapt and decrease inflammation and, and increase neurotransmitters in the brain. And it's just that it's good for your body. So pushing your body, as, as you've mentioned, all the things you've dealt with so far and, and, and we're involved in is just so important. So, I mean, that's kind of where we're, that's where, again, this is important, not only that you were a trendsetter, but also that this is things that you can do now and use to benefit your health. It's not just some crazy weird thing and looks good on Instagram. Absolutely. I mean, there's an episode now on the, the Netflix show Human Playground, uh, the very first episode where they you know, showcase many you know, people that are doing incredibly hard things. And one of, the last, uh, one of the last clips is of a woman who had survived incredible trauma and how she plunges every single day. Because again, that's, it's, it's like it's her therapist. And I, at least I find for me, you know, you slowly moving into that. I, I was very fortunate to have been able to, to go into the ice immediately, but that's not the, that's not the path for everybody. So, you know, typically 40 to, you know, 40 to 50 degree water is, is optimal. I say the, the minimal viable dose is, or at least the, the best entry point is your cold shower. Try to end your showers on cold or oscillate between hot and cold as a, as a sort of first introduction with it. But just know more than anything, it is a great way to escape your mind. It's a great way to, to de decrease inflammation in the body. And if, you know, it's, it's not to say like you should do it because everybody's doing it, but, but if you were on the fence, there's a lot of different places that you can, that you can now be pointed to because of, of how we're seeing the science support, the, the, you know, the science supporting the movement. There's a, I mean, there's so much cool stuff coming out. Um, I mean, yeah, end your shower 30 seconds. Um, yeah, the, I think no matter who you talk to, um, I've had the cold plunge stinks for everybody the first 20 or 30 seconds. It just, yes. you own it. And then you like, you just, they get that, ah, you have like little angels singing above your head. And that's right. It's, yeah. It's your little zone. So, it, I mean, it's exactly. perfect. And I, um, there's, I mean, now we're evolving. I actually hopefully can have him on as a new inventor of co what's called um, cold for, on your hands, which Andrew Huberman has been talking about. Yeah, yep. yep. As you work so cold definitely is not a fad. It works optimally and it's something you definitely should include as part of your training. So before we go into where your burn is now moving to, so yep. like you said, you were in the most, again, you've been competitive in the advertising boardroom, competitive at um, SNL from my heard from other people, including you. It's, it's not always a friendly environment. You want to get your stuff on. You want to be the one and lead to wherever your, your future career. And now you're competing uh, in the, the Nomad Flatiron, which back when you started, it was like literally gym, food, gym, food. How did you, I mean, again, luckily you had a, a new niche, but I mean, you guys are on the Today Show. How did you differentiate yourself? How did you build your brand up and what tricks did you use even, and tools did you use to kind of get yourself there? Honestly, nothing speaks more volumes than just being good at what you do. So we, we knew that the first entry point was people walking into like a nice, warm, friendly environment that didn't feel artificial, that didn't sort of fall victim to a lot of the pitfalls that boutique fitness, you know, brands fall into, which is like feeling too exclusive. We wanted to be, you know, we wanted to be familiar. We wanted to, you know, invite you into this incredibly innovative inimitable experience that we know you've never done before. Um, so I think being ourselves and also well, being welcoming and not, you know, not coming off as too exclusive, both in price and in, in practice was really a, our biggest success. And, you know, you, the, I think it speaks volumes of like, if you want to be seen, if you want to really stand toe to toe with the best of the best, you got to be where the people are. And we knew that like, there was around like 300 studios within like a, like, you know, one mile radius, you know, in, in, in that area. So like, of course we want to be where all the sharks are swimming, you know, even if we felt like our brand at that time was a minimum, we were able to grow into uh, a competitive space that had over 23,000 people walk through our doors in 18 months. 
I mean, there, you know, I mean, there's so many options. The fact that someone chose us several times a week means something. And we used, we, we were, we, we used like that data and we, we used that experience to really be able to create the next chapter of the business, which was taking a very popular workout that we did in the fridge and be able to give people goosebumps in a different way during the pandemic when we were forced to close our studio, unfortunately. So, um, so, you know, I would love to talk a little bit more about that. That's where we're heading. Great segue. The writing back, perfect segue. So <laughs> unfortunately the pandemic happened, every, all fitness went online. You guys adapted again, like cold, cold makes you do. And now you have the burn board, the burn workouts, you have this big omni-channel fitness brand. So w- why is that important? Where are we heading now? And uh... yeah, so, you know, when the pandemic happened, I mean, especially in New York, when you were told, when we were told we're not allowed to open it and, and rightfully, rightfully so, you know, Johnny being a public health guy, we did all that we could prior to, to the announcement that, that we, well, we actually closed before, um, before we were, you know, the city was mandated close. So, cause we wanted to, 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 you know, follow the science and, and to, you know, to make sure that our customers and our staff were safe. Um, but we knew that like, as, as time was going on and, and stuff wasn't reopening, we're like, wow, you know, we have this very unique in-person experience that you really can't replicate at home. So like, what are we going to do? But again, six months prior to the pandemic, you know, Johnny comes up to me, he's like, Hey, you know, a lot of people are talking about how they can buy a slide, the slide board that we had, the six foot adjustable slide board uh, in our class. That it, how could they get one from their home? How can they, you know, if they can't co- go to the studio, how could they still do a slide board workout? And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And so we started to develop technology and develop a, a program about how to do like an at home slide board workout because it's extremely portable. It's incredibly, you know, uh, cost effective, unlike most at home fitness equipment. And so we were working on that. We got a provisional patent for, for smart technology to put onto the board if, in fact, we wanted to evolve in that way. But then, you know, six months later, the pandemic happens and we're like, okay, I guess like, you know, we, this, this slide board thing is now the new track for the business, the new chapter that we have to co-write together from scratch for the business. So I sort of joke and say, if the studio was breaking bad, our slide board model is better call Saul. You know, we took this like really beloved, unusual character and gave them their own show. And I'm so happy that we did that because just like we saw a necessity to warm people up to cool temperature training and just cold exposure in general, the fact that there are that every fitness concept out there focuses on sagittal plane movements, north to south movements, and zero focus on frontal plane, side to side movements. We felt that was a unique opportunity to, again, educate customers about what they need to look forward to lateral moves. And the best way to do lateral movement training is via a slide board. It was a, it was a, pro, it was a piece of equipment that I used as a division one athlete, which is why I brought it into the, into the fitness, the boutique fitness space with Johnny. And we, and people would comment on, oh my God, I feel like I'm ice skating. I feel like I'm rollerblading. I, you know, I'm someone that doesn't like to run. So, you know, not me personally, but people are like, oh, you know, running hurts my knees, but sliding side to side is incredible. It, it has, you know, you could burn a crap ton of calories in a short amount of time if that's something that you're interested in. But we wanted people to be able to improve their balance, their coordination, their core strength, and just their overall athletic performance by by activating almost every muscle in their body in like one movement across the board that really hits all three planes of motion, sagittal, transverse, and frontal plane in, in one movement. So that was our that was the problem that we were trying to solve. And very fortunate, we were very fortunate to have the the king of lateral movement training, Apollo Ono, reach out to us and want to be an investor and brand partner in our in our journey. So that was a really that was that was nice. That one, one that was only great for the company to be able to have like a big, you know, a big name behind us, but to be able to be assured that the way that we were seeing the direction of the company was going in the right way. No, I mean, yeah, that's again tra- definitely a trend saying definitely important to work in all the different planes and not just work on one set of muscles, otherwise it leads to imbalance and other things. And I'm sure that's part of the reason that you adopted it. So um and then, so what's involved, what, is it a, when you're trying to work on this lateral side motion, is this a, a 30 minute workout? Is it something people need to be doing once a week, once every couple of days? 
um, how does what is the uh, the time requirement there? And then I guess they would just do it through your online courses, correct? Yeah. So during the pandemic and even now, like time is 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 the is the most valuable currency, right? So we knew that you can get a lot with very little, you know, with very little time in a very little time, you can really get that workout that you, that you desire. And whether it's to improve your athletic performance, or if you're someone that's in the active aging population, want to be able to work on movements that are going to make you improve your proprioception and, and not be a fall risk later in your life. Or if you're someone who has, you know, that wants to rehabilitate, you know, your knees or your hips because of overuse in the sagittal plane from running or rowing or cycling, you know, we really wanted to, to create a multi-generational platform that met people's bodies where they're at. And part of that was, you know, de de developing workouts based upon our experience at the studio in a, a bunch of different time sets. So we have five to 60 minute workouts that you can do from 10 plus categories in over, you know, from hundreds and hundreds of classes taught by 20 plus instructors that were not only founding instructors of our studios, but well, a lot of incredibly talented, you know, you know, people that didn't have jobs during the pandemic and and became part of our brand because of the opportunity that we were presenting, not just to them, but to but to the you know, uh, cut you know to to the industry at large. So, so yeah, we have an on-demand fitness subscription that comes with you know the purchase of a board if you buy them together. Uh, if not, it's a it's a seven ninety nine you know seven dollars ninety nine cent membership or a seventy nine dollar membership for the year. Um, you know, at home is where we started, but we, you know, we evolved out of, out of, you know, out of the home and being able to, again, meet people where they're at, where they're going to gyms, they're going to studios. So no matter where you are, we want the board to be, you know, under your feet. So we're very fortunate that we have developed relationships with boutique studios and other, in other facilities that you can find a burn board there and to be able to do the types of training that we were doing when we had our studio. And because of the of the sliding action and in the lack of friction, is that anybody if you have like you said if you have bad knees or you have a low back, this should not be it should be something you're still able to do. It opens up training and the weight loss and the to a lot of different patients, a lot of different people who wouldn't have access to it normally. Absolutely, I mean most most slide boards prior to us coming to market in 2018 were found either in. Perfect, you know, collegiate, professional, and Olympic strength and training facilities because they, you know, those coaches understand the necessity of lateral movement training, or you would find them in physical therapy clinics. And if you found them there, they were the crappy roll-up ones that would actually slide while you're sliding. So we developed a incredibly durable, eco-friendly board that won't move while you're being moved by our by our programming. So, so it's in in addition to just not only creating great workouts, Dr. Paulvin. We felt the need to really lean into education. So, you know, I'm actually really happy on this platform to announce that uh, in, in the next week, so the, the the second week of October, we will be launching the industry's first accredited slide board training education that can actually be applied to NASM and AFA's continuing education credits. So if you're a personal trainer or coach, we have this curriculum that you can get 0.8 credits for NASM and up to eight credits for AFA. We're going to be working with, with ACE and other entities soon, but it's, it's education, not just for trainers, but for, you know, for businesses that want to be able to license our, our, you know, our concept into their doors that they can learn through all the experiences, through the many, many hours that we had put together and, and learned from, from do, having this, this experience in the studio, that they're able to safely and effectively use, you know, a slide board, specifically ours, to add to their training. That's really incredible. It's becoming more now part of the modern fitness landscape, which again, uh, the, again, like you said, I remember going to the gym or having a trainer and I had to wear those little weird booties like you get when you yep. go into like a private space. I'm like, this is really awkward. And your board is just so much more, so much easier to use. So it's, yeah. it's really, again, it's great that you guys are getting yourself into the mainstream there. So, and that we go from burn back into other things that you've used in terms how you've had to uh, adapt and use certain things in terms of uh, how life hits you. I know we talked about briefly in terms of some life, but you have another good other things that are going on in your life and you've that it's yeah. come of a battle so that we want to talk about so why don't you go into that a little bit and sure so you know uh you know i've been very 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 fortunate to, to be working with you for for quite some time and i know that i was expressing interest in 
um, you know, embracing some peptides. I had some like lower, you know, lower back pain from, from wrestling. And uh, you introduced me to BPC 157. We were talking about TB 500 and you know, MK 677 and, and IGF one and all the fun, fun things that like, you know, that, uh, you know, fitness enthusiasts like myself wants to be able to embrace this sort of like these alternative um, interventions. And before we did so, you know, you requested uh, a blood panel, which is very smart to do so they kind of understand us, you know, what, what is like, you know, to take a snapshot of, you know, of my system to see where, where are the holes that we can fill. And in doing so, you noticed that I had, you know, very high FSH levels and that was sort of indicative of something that could be happening with my, you know, with my, you know, some, some reproductive parts of my body. And I had seen a, a urologist and I found out that I had, um, you know, I had issues with fertility as a result of that. You know, at the time, my uh, my my wife Rachel and I were, you know, trying to have uh, trying to start a family, and I was having we were having some problems, and uh, it turns out that the problems were lying within my own physiology. I had low test, I had low testosterone, I had a low sperm count, and you know, it was something that that is not really commonly expressed in, in the, you know, for, for in the, in that, in that uh, arena, especially with, with male infertility. So um, I really had no other option, but to seek intervention. So I, you know, was working alongside my urologist and obviously alongside you and we're, was trying to develop a plan that was going to allow me to, to start that journey um, unnaturally, if you will. So uh, I had been prescribed Clomid, you know, a very, you know, L-carnitine and other, other things that were going to help boost my account. Um, and, you know, I experienced all the side effects that, that Clomid could, you know, has to offer. I was getting hot flashes. I had, you know, uh, since my, 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 my nipples were sensitive, I was getting very emotional and my wife's like, Oh, welcome to being a woman. I'm yeah, like, you're like, there you go. You're like, a I'm like, okay, fantastic. Yeah, so, I, so talking about working through some challenges to come on, to, to come out on the other side, better for it. So, had done that for for a few weeks and was able to um, you know work with this incredible company called Kind Body, which was helping us with our with our you know our our fertility journey. And I'm really happy to say that um, through through IVF, my wife and I will be expecting a baby boy March of 2023. So I'm here to say that you know what may seem like a you know a, a huge insult to your ego and you know, you feeling like you're like you're less than what you are. I can't encourage people enough to check their PSA levels, their their free and total testosterone levels, their thyroid, um, the FSH levels. You know, all, all all the levels to be able to show up. You know, to to these to these experiences that you're trying to embrace. And I, I will say now, like a person that you know, my my testosterone levels were around like 125. I think when we first met, which was very very low. I've never been someone to abuse steroids or any of those products, so it wasn't. It was like weird how things were so low. I was feeling very lethargic and, and not myself. And uh, I'm currently um, I'm about 12 weeks into testosterone re replacement therapy, working with my urologist. And, um, and my levels now are normal. My PSA levels are low. My estradiol levels are within range and I feel fantastic. I mean, it's something that is going to be an intervention that I need to you know, consider for, for the rest of my life. But I will say that I had taken matters into my own hands, working alongside incredible people like you and, and my urologist in the city to find out, you know, how I can best optimize, you know, my, my experience. And it's, I'm not afraid to admit that. And, I'm here as a resource for anybody who does have questions about that because it is it is becoming more common in people. You know, I'm 37, so it, it's becoming more common in men in their 30s than 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 it was 10, 20 years ago with the rise of microplastics in people's blood, you know, in, in their bloodstream and and all of the, all those other things, all of the other stressors that affect uh, you know your human physiology. It's great that you're open. And again, it's more and more people are, are getting it out there. That is something you need to look into. It's nothing to be embarrassed by, something to be open about. There's so many new treatments out there that you just kind of described. So it's great that you got the got the concerns out there. You succeeded. There'll be a new bouncing baby boy. Um, That's right. You and Rachel, now the que you. big question we want to know is you're going to be now a baby burn board? So like, or like oh, a falling burn doctor, board or now? So what's, what's great about this, Dr. Paulvin, is that I've always been very dad joke forward 
not being a dad. So now it'll just be jokes and that will be my sense of humor moving forward. But, oh, I'm already, I'm already saying, you know, I think our announcement post, I said, you know, oh boy, look who's sliding into our family 2023. And it was like hashtag baby on board. So yes, to answer your question, there will be a lot of baby on board jokes. And we'll have to talk about with our, you know, our manufacturing partner, which is based in, in, in Ohio, um, if they can make a little mini board for, for my son. So we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that journey. Once yeah, we, once we get may there. not be as funny as you thought they were now now you're getting up in the middle and i haven't to change diapers so we'll see how that i works. know oh I'm, i i'm i'm loathing what my you know my recovery score is going to be on with my whoop uh so i'm trying to stack my sleep as, as much as i can now so you brought that so we're winding down i really appreciate as we went through the life journey of like this this is your life jimmy martin um appreciate you going through all those things great info for the people that are listening out there so hey let's tell us what's going on with burn and if you have that one tip that kind of people can learn from uh what could it be so uh if you want to follow burn you can follow us at burn b triple r n on instagram my personal instagram is at jimmy t martin uh, on instagram um, burn is again, we are the leaders of lateral movement training, whether you're doing it at home, whether you were doing it at a PT clinic, whether you were doing it under the roof of, a, of another incredible brand, we think that you should, you know, look forward to lateral moves because as I you know, sort of demonstrated in our conversation, um, you know, progress isn't linear and you're going to be, you're going to have to pivot along the way in, in your life. And it's important to understand that sometimes you're going to have to make a lateral move and they're a necessity for growth. So every time I look down at that board, I'm seeing my reflection in that board. I'm reminded of, of that sentiment that, you know, you, you don't know what direction life will take you. But if you're willing to step outside your comfort zone and show up uh, in a new and more meaningful way each and every day, um, you know, the, the places that you're trying to go, you'll get to. There you go. Perfect. So again, thanks for hopping on. Uh, check out uh, Jimmy and uh, Burn is always good for business information. And you'll definitely get a laugh. And I think we got at least 10 laughs in there. So you did. You I'm so happy that we got at least one. That, that was my, that was my goal. Perfect. So <laughs> thanks for hopping on and uh, we'll talk soon. Tune in for thanks, the next Dr. episode. Paulson. Tune in soon for the next episode of Life Optimized. Bye-bye.